Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. I just got attacked by a mountain lion. Good boy, Chaos. You're keeping the fuck off of me. Holy shit. That was the scariest fish I ever seen. Motherfucker beat me. Shredded the back of my shirt. Keep him off of me, boy. Good boy, Chaos. Keep that fuck cat away from me. Let's come down, boy. You're gonna be a badass now. Come down, I guarantee this dog will kill you. That's why you ran like a sissy after he had you by the neck. I didn't survive a mountain lion attack. I was rescued from a mountain lion attack by my dog. My name is Dave Mulliken, Real Deal Dog Training. The day started for me, uh, I wasn't having such a good morning. Uh, Business-wise, had a little altercation with one of our board and trained dogs. Uh, me and the wife were arguing a little bit. So uh, I decided to clear my head and take off to the mountains and go hike. Just uh, something I like to do. So I went to Lytle Creek, uh, which is San Bernardino uh, National Forest. I'm real familiar with the area. I mean, I, I kind of know it by the back of my hand. I took chaos with me, and to be 100% honest, uh, it was out of pure laziness. Uh, I usually take my puppy that I want to groom up and teach new things and, and stuff like that, and I, he was up in the top arena, and his father, Chaos, was in the garage, and it was just, like I said, out of pure laziness. I just got the closest dog and went to the car and left. Nice waterfall up there, nice things to do, uh, beautiful scenery. We do see a lot of wildlife, but it's mostly small wildlife from squirrels to rabbits to bobcats, stuff like that. Never seen a mountain lion, never seen even a ram that's supposedly up there. The location I went to is a well-traveled area, uh, especially on the weekends or towards the end of the, the week. Uh, and there's families up there from little babies to dogs to old people. I mean, it's well-traveled, probably 1,500 people on a Saturday alone in the middle of the summer go up to the, the waterfalls. It was blue skies, nice day, not too hot, not too cold, perfect day for a hike. And that morning I was just wanted to be by myself. I was done with people. So I continued forward, which I hadn't gone before, probably 300 yards from the falls. Started through the, the, the foliage. I got on a big pile of, of logs and people say spidey sense or your intuition, something told me not to get off them logs. And I just took it as they're unstable. So I got off the logs right after I got off those logs. Uh, spidey sense went away per se and nothing out of the ordinary continued my hike. When I'm hiking with my dogs, I, I let them be free. You know, they always stay in, in either earshot or eye shot. They usually don't go too far. So he was ahead of me. You know, maybe 25 yards ahead of me, just cruising through the canyon. So I came through on an everyday hike. Dog went ahead of me. I stopped right here to look at the natural water runoff in here, thinking that there could be gold down in there. Just a thought in my head. Continued my hike. I got to right here. I heard a noise. When I heard the pitter patter, actually, it's something I never heard before, but it didn't scare me in any way to turn around or check it out. I just continued. What got me to turn around is I've been hiking up there for so long that I know the little teeny pebble slides usually mean the bigger rocks coming behind it. So when I heard that, that's what actually got me to turn around and look behind me. I, would, I mean, paws and teeth, that's, that's all I saw. I literally just turned, screamed against this rock, and basically in a fetal position. The cat hit me so hard it slammed me into the rock. Uh, it wasn't probably a half a second and the dog was there. Uh, but I could feel the breathing. I could feel them on me. There's, not, there's nothing I could have done no matter what anybody says or thinks or weapon or whatnot. It was such surprise that you didn't have time to do anything. So when he hit the cat, the cat went straight to his back. He had him by the neck. 
The cat wrapped the dog up, all four claws he was on his back, had him wrapped up. They were fighting, I was yelling. The cat tried to bite him in the neck. No, no, no. The dog was laying vertically in the middle of the cat's stomach. And as I'm yelling, I could see the cat's trying to push the dog off a little to bite his neck. And you could see in one of the collar, in the collar, he actually bit the side of his neck, but couldn't get a good bite because of the collar. Um, at that time, I was screaming, yelling. And before you know it, it's just kind of poof, bunch of dust in um, there in the bushes. So as the cat's trying to bite Chaos's neck, Chaos is just digging deeper and shaking and, and I'm just putting as much pain and, and uh, fight into that as he possibly could. I came millimetering down here, not running by any means, screaming top of my lungs. I honestly thought he wasn't gonna make it. You know, it's just them teeth are so big and what I was seeing and uh, yeah, that's why I was yelling, screaming. You know, that's my, my best friend. I don't want nothing to happen to him. Saw the dog shake one last time, and they went in those bushes. I grabbed my phone, and I actually called my wife because I'd left that morning and tell anybody where I went like an idiot. I luckily got cell service and let her know I got attacked by a mountain lion and where I was, and then the phone cut off. And that's when I started my video right there. Hold issue. Holy ish. I just got attacked by a mountain lion. Chaos, where is he? And then finally, as I'm calling my dog, I finally see my dog. See the and then I started room. asking him, you know, where's the cat? Show me the cat. He started showing me the cat. And I, I even, you can see here in the video, I didn't believe him. And he ain't in the tree, boy, I don't see him. Chaos. Well, he knew exactly where he was, he, you know. Um, I had to go get my dog. Like I said, he would not come to me, which is unheard of. So I had a visual sight, basically, where I knew the cat couldn't be. So I went to get my dog, and once I got close to leash the dog, I noticed the cat was above me in the tree. Got this boy tree. Yeah, that was a scary place in my life right there. He had my shoulder, and chaos jumped him. He's about, chaos about a half a mile ahead of me. Start yelling and fighting. Next thing you know, chaos come and jumped them. They were fighting for a good couple minutes. They were fighting for a good couple minutes. Come down, boy. You gonna be a badass now. Come down, I guarantee this dog will kill you. I went from the most scared I've ever been in my life to the most mad I've ever been in my life. And you can see my boy is not playing. He got a few battle wounds, but he wants his cat. And he wants him bad. I try to explain to people. My dog does not play. He touched me and he will hurt you. This cat's bleeding from the neck, the side of his face. He up there moaning and crying. But you just met a Malinois. I don't know, honestly, if I was videoing for, this might be my last video ever. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I was so scared. Yeah, I just did it. And uh, after I got that second video, my anger started to subside and I went back into fear. And as I started to leave, I took my eyes off the cat, started to walk away and I heard another noise. I looked back up and the cat's gonna come out of the tree on top of me. And that's when I, I freaked out. I mean, I literally right back to scared like I was in the beginning. I turned around, I fired up my dog and I walked out of there backwards. I got out of the foliage to where in the opening where I knew I was gonna be okay. Well thought I'd be a lot better than I was. And uh, all that adrenaline, it left. And I literally collapsed and started petting my dog and telling him how much I loved him and checking him for wounds. After I did that, you know, a minute or two, I went to continue on to get out of there to go tell people, the ranger, the cops, you know, people that have warned other people. And I really couldn't walk. I didn't understand it at that time, but I got to my car, I loaded my dog, I drove as fast as I could to the ranger station to warn people and explain what happened. And uh, when I got there, I continued to tell the gentleman what, what happened and what I just went through. And at first he kind of laughed and he didn't believe me until he saw the back of my shirt. And then he right away, you know, went from uh, joking around basically to serious business. He had fishing game on the phone, the ward and everybody within minutes. So chaos is Belgian Malinois. He's my personal dog, and this dog's pretty fearless. He, he, he does anything I ask him to do, but I honestly can't tell you that I would have thought he would have came 
and save me from a mountain lion. I mean, who does that? That's kind of crazy. Um, I mean, I know he will from a human. He'll do any, you know anything I ask, but uh, that was like a true testimonial of what the dog will do for me. You know, um, I mean, put his life on the line for me. I'm a dog trainer. I think chaos is, is a good testimonial to what I do here. I don't do it for sport. I don't do it for play. I don't do it for fake protection dogs. I like to build the fight in the dog. I like the, my dogs to fully understand and be confident enough to fight in any situation. Let's go easy. My training philosophy has, has a lot of controversial stuff to it. Uh, to call it a liability. In my book, anything's a liability. You have a gun, you own a gun, it's a liability. Your kid gets a hold of it, something bad could happen. Um, if you're a good gun owner or a good handler, good dog owner, those liabilities subside really quickly. Um, yes, the gun could kill somebody. Yes, the dog could really hurt somebody. But as we found out in real life, I'd rather have that liability on my side than not by my side. Uh, it's not so much of the craziness in the dog as the dog is trained for this, just like anything else. It's what you do with it. It's how you take care of it. It's how you mentor that dog into how to be a dog. Uh, when he's not doing his job, you know, he's like every other dog. He plays with my kids, he hikes, he does normal things. But when it's time for serious business, he understands, you know, thank God, just like the mountain lion, that it's not a game. It's no hesitation, 100% hit the, the threat and, and handle it the best you can. Pressure and, and confidence is a huge thing that I, that I train. I, I train for real life, whether I like to build this like the military, you build the confidence so high, these men think they're indestructible. We all know we're not, but with the confidence along with the training, it, it's, a, it's a really good mixture. Like with the cat, there was no hesitation. He hit that cat like a freight train. Um, I couldn't even really fathom that in the head for a few days. Like, he didn't even hesitate. I, I as a full-grown human being, coward. With that being said, I want people to understand that, you know, I didn't think my dog had any chance with that cat. Um, like I said, I was crying. I, I, I thought my dog was done. But if I would have lost my dog that day and I would have survived, Yes, I would have cried. Yes, I would have been hurt for months. And But in my book, that's a good dog. The, the, the dog kept me alive. The dog kept the cat off me. The dog did everything I trained it to do. I just, I, I really believe that, you know, it, it was up to God whether that, that dog lived or died. It had nothing to do with my training or, I mean, he's fighting a killing machine. He had no chance. We're, we're trying to, we're trying to uh, educate people and it could happen to anybody, you know? Like, a lot of people are thinking the same. I thought the same way as you. I honestly did, bro. I I'm thought, oh, by myself. it won't happen to me. It, won't ha myself. it only happens in this time, and right. this time. No. And I, didn't, and, I didn't, and I didn't even bring my poles, and I used, I always, I don't carry a gun, but I carry a knife. You know, everybody says what they would do to a mountain lion. You know, I was one of those guys, 100% to be honest with you. I thought it wouldn't happen to me. I carry a knife. I got this. I got that. I'll stab it. I'll shoot it. All this stuff. Um, it's far from the truth. Without the dog, I was stuck. Um, I was at the mercy of that lion. To be sitting here in the condition I'm in, in the condition my dog is in, is unheard of. Uh, I've talked to rangers, fish and wildlife, I've talked to a lot of people. Uh, I truly believe I'm blessed to be here. And not only that, it's changed my life a lot. I stopped smoking cigarettes. It made me realize that life is precious, that it could end at any day. I honestly believe if my dog wasn't there that day, I'd be dead. We wouldn't be having this conversation. My kids would have no father, my wife would have no husband. Um, I mean, the days look different. The sky looks different to me. The, the dogs bark different. Everything is different to me. Um, I can't explain it so much as in, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be breathing this air, sitting here, uh, wake up every morning, you know? I uh, thank God for uh, just being around.